Hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to be making it so that when we go to our inventory screen, we can click on our item and it's actually going to display the inventory description and make the usable button turn on or not. We can change this so that the item is usable and if we click the use button, we're gonna be creating a Unity event. Now we're not gonna be using this Unity event just yet. Next time we'll be making a health potion and a magic potion, but you can see that we're creating the groundwork for creating a pretty flexible system here. So let's jump right in. Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. So where we left off, we have our inventory scene here that is gonna read from our player inventory and display the objects that are in the inventory on the screen. Now what we wanna do is we wanna make it so that when we press one of these inventory slots, our description text will come up and if the item is usable, we'll get a use button. And we'll go into making that use button work in the next video. For now, we're just gonna make it so that it knows what text should be here and whether or not it should be usable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my scripts and I'm gonna open a few of them. So in my inventory script, I wanna look at the inventory manager and I wanna look at the inventory slot. And I don't know why it's opening a new version of Visual Studio, but it is. So I'm gonna wait for that to load and I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, so in general, I'm pretty against having it so that our objects in Unity are rigidly attached to each other because that makes it difficult to extend things. However, in this case, um, I'm okay with these items being rigidly attached to each other, the inventory manager in each inventory slot, because um, they're only going to ever exist with each other. So I'm okay with the inventory manager being rigidly attached to the inventory slot the way that we've done it right now with this reference to this manager. And I'm okay with the inventory manager being able to do things to inventory slot because the two of them are, are really pretty darn close to each other. So what I wanna do is in my inventory manager here, I'm going to, I won't need the update method, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to create a new method, and this is going to need to be public because it's going to be something that can be referenced from the inventory slots. So I'm going to call this public void because it doesn't return anything. And I'm going to call this setup description and button. And yeah, I like long descriptive names of things uh, because it helps me remember what things do if I come back to a project or to a script with a, you know, taking weeks or even months away from it. Now, to set up the description, you're gonna to need to know what text goes here and whether or not this button should be turned on. So for the text, that's gonna take a string value and for whether or not the button should be on, that's gonna take a Boolean value, just a true or a false. So I'm gonna pass those two values in here. So I'm gonna do string, we'll call this new description string and then we'll also take a boolean value and we'll call this bool uh, is button usable yeah that makes sense all right so essentially all i want to do here is i want to take that description string and i want to set our description text to have that as its text so description text dot text is equal to new description string and then we're going to say um, use button dot set active. And the active value I want to give it is whether or not that is button usable is. So I'm just going to pass in is button usable just directly to say if it's true or false. Now I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to my inventory slot. Now my inventory slot is going to need to uh, have some method that uh, is gonna be called when it's clicked on, when you tap it or when you click on it. So I'm gonna call this a public void, again, because it doesn't return anything, and we'll call this clicked on. And this doesn't need to have any methods handed into it. Now what I wanna do is I wanna first make sure that we have an item that's been assigned to this slot. So I'm gonna say if inventory item, this item is what I called it. So if this item, meaning if this item exists, uh, then we're going to do something. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take the inventory manager, 
So the disk manager dot setup description and button. And then for the description, I'm going to pass in this item dot item description. And then for whether or not the button should be usable, I'm going to do this item dot usable. So that's the true or false value. So I'm going to save this. Now, it's not going to do anything right now. Uh, even after I save, make sure I save both the scripts. I did. It's not going to do anything just yet. We have to make sure that the UI is hooked up correctly. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my prefabs here as soon as Unity is done compiling. And in my prefabs, I need to make sure that the Unity event that is attached to the slot knows what to do. So in my prefabs, inventory, inventory slot, I'm going to open this prefab. I'm still using 2018.3 because of the way that I'm using the signal system. And in general, if you start a project in a certain version of Unity, unless you need one of those new features that Unity implements, it's a good idea to continue your project in that version of Unity. Um, so yeah, I'm going to jump back here and my inventory slot, I've got this in the main inventory slot. I've got this on click event. So I'm going to add something to it. And this needs to know what uh, it's getting an event from or a, a method from. I'm just going to pull my inventory slot script directly onto there. I'm going to choose um, inventory slot and click on. So that's going to send it the information to the inventory manager. Now this should auto save. So if I click this back arrow, it should take me directly back to my uh, inventory screen here. Uh, now, let's try this out. So I'm going to hit play. <laughs> and if I click on this, see this item has this as its text and it's not usable so the use button doesn't come up. Now if I go to my scriptable object for this inventory item, my soldier sword, and I make it usable, and click on it again, the use button becomes active. It doesn't do anything. Uh, but there it is. If I make this unusable, there we go. So uh, we're passing uh, we're passing uh, information from our inventory slot to the inventory manager. Now the next thing that we need to do is hook up the usable item. So there's a few different ways that we can do this, and I thought about this quite a bit. But here's the best way that I came up with. So I want to open my inventory item script. So I'm going to go to inventory, inventory item. And in here, um, what I want to do is I want to add another event uh, similar to the event that we made for, or similar to the event that we just used for the inventory slot passing information to the manager. In order to do that, I need to add another using statement. I want to use those events. So I'm going to add using unityengine.events. And then as an extra thing here, I'm going to add a public unity event, and I'm just going to call it this event. Now I'm going to create a new method here, and this is going to be a public void use, and I want it to be generic so that it can be used for anything that's any item that's going to need to be used. And when we call this use method, I want to do this event dot invoke which means to call whatever method, or methods, as the case may be, is being used by this event. Now, what's going to happen here, at a high level, the inventory slot just knows what item it has, and it passes information about what item it has to the inventory manager, which displays information here I'm going to jump back into my inventory manager. I'm going to require another variable. So I've got a description string, whether or not the item is usable. I'm going to add another variable or um, 
thing that needs to be passed in. I don't know what's wrong with my nouns today. Uh, I'm going to call this inventory item and I'll call it current item. Now, uh, this inventory item, that's the current item, I need to be able to have some sort of reference to that. So I'm going to go up here to the beginning of Inventory Manager, where we create our variables, and I'm going to call this a public. So this doesn't have to be a serialized field, because it does need to be changed by another script. This is going to be a public inventory item, and I'm going to call it um, current item. Is that what I just called this one down here? It is. So I'm going to call this new item instead of current item. I'm going to call it new item. And then when I click on the button, I want to make sure that current item is equal to new item. OK. Now that means if I go back over to my inventory slot script, you'll see that I now have an error here. And the error is that I don't have the correct number of arguments that I'm passing through. So I need to pass in another item. And that is this item. If I save that now, it should be fine. Now, if I go back into Unity, hit play again, we're going to be paying attention to what happens with the inventory manager. So, as soon as it's done compiling, I'm a little impatient with Unity as far as compiling goes. So if we open up our inventory panel here, we can see that our current item is none. But if I click on this, we now have our soldier sword. So we don't need the slot to know anything about that use button. I'm going to add a little uh, extra thing here just to make sure that it's going to work the way I want it to. In the inventory item, I'm going to add a, a debug.log. And I'm just going to just use pass in a string here. We'll call this using item. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back into Unity here, and on my inventory panel, uh, again, I'm being impatient. I now have to add, under item description, the use button. I need to make an on click event for the use button. So I'm going to add to this, and I'm going to grab the inventory panel itself, which is where the manager is. And from my functions, I'm going to grab the inventory manager. And oh, aha, the use button needs to actually have something. So uh, in my inventory manager, this is going to get its own method for using. So we'll call this public void use button pressed. And what this is going to do is make sure that we currently have an item that's set to be our current item. So if current item, meaning if current item exists, then we're going to do current item dot use. And that current item dot use is going to go to the inventory item. It's going to call this use method. So we should see that debug dot log, even though we won't see anything else happen from it, because we haven't created uh, anything to attach to this unity event yet. So I'm going to go back into unity here. On my use button, I'm going to go to inventory manager and we'll oh, it's still compiling. So it doesn't know quite what to add just yet. There we go. Oops. So inventory manager, and I want to do use button pressed. So now, if I click play, here's what we've changed. So soldier sword is not a useful item, so we don't see use come up. I'm going to go to my scriptable objects and my inventory items. And let's say we want Soldier Sword to be a usable item. So if I click on this, now it's usable. And if I click Use, you can see that we get this debug log. That means that this was actually trying to call something. Now what's interesting about this is the method that it calls from our inventory uh, item itself. So if we look at our Soldier Sword, we've got this event. I can add an event from here. And this event can be from anything. It doesn't have to be something in the screen or in the scene. So we're going to talk about this next time, how we can use the fact that these um, methods that it calls when we press the event can come from anywhere. We're going to use that next time in order to make uh, a health potion and a magic potion work. So that's what we're covering next. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below.
If you want to get more help directly, you can join my Discord where I'm chatting every day, but then there's also a ton of really smart people who are honestly probably better at this than I am, are totally willing to help out uh, whenever they can. So it's a really cool community there. Shout out to the mods, um, Sir Psycho yeah, and Faker for making everything nice and pleasant. Uh, I have a Patreon where you can contribute if you like this tutorial. As little as a dollar a month helps me keep making these, so feel free if you want to. It's absolutely not necessary. My general idea is however much money would fall out of your pocket that you wouldn't bend over to pick up, that's how much you should uh, contribute. And if that amount is zero, totally fine. Um, also, I'd like to point out there's a, a YouTuber that is doing some really excellent Unity tutorials. And when I put in my notes to shout out this YouTuber, um, they were at like 1,300 subscribers, and then uh, I took some time off, and they just exploded. I think they're at like 40 or 50,000 now. Uh, that's Mix and Jam. I'll put a link to them in the description down below. They do a really good job of breaking down their logic, what they do, why they do it. So go ahead and check them out. And yeah, otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.